Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am going to do my June wrap up part one. So I have read 18 books in June, so that's way too many for one video. So this is the first half, second half will be coming in the next video. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. First up, I read Remarkably Average, Average Parenting by Ilana Wiles. I gave this three stars. Um, I also finished The Montessori Baby, um, which follows Maria Montessori's methods of child rearing and education, and I gave that one four stars. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's move on to my normal reading tastes. Uh, so the first one that I read uh, was Tin Man by Sarah Winman. So we are following... Ellis and Michael um, and they're just so pure and they just are supporting each other as best they can when their relationship develops into something more and it's right at this cusp of the something more that Annie enters the picture and changes the dynamics. The story is told from the future when Ellis is older and something devastating has happened and Ellis is alone. So there is so much like grief in this really short book and the character development is excellent. Um, I ended up giving this four and a half stars. I really loved this, um, but the con of this is that it left me completely devastated and I did go into a reading slump afterwards. So I really do recommend this book, uh, but definitely check out Trigger Warnings because as much as this book has sweetness and light, it also has really dark elements as well that could be triggering for some readers. All right, so after that, um, I was feeling really down, if, <laughs> if I'm being honest because the book is just devastating. So um, I wanted to pick up something that was completely different. So I picked up The Passion of New Eve by Angela Carter. Um, and I originally got this because of the cover. I just like could not not get this. This is my second try at Angela Carter and I think we just don't mesh well together. I really, really don't like her writing style. I find it overwrought and highly pretentious. Um, like to the point of just ridiculousness. So this was not for me, this is a DNF and I don't recommend it. All right, so after that I was like, well great, I had a crushing book and a DNF. So I wanna read something that is a little more like adventurous, like adventure feeling to like boost my mood. So I picked up the Binding by Bridget Collins. I just wanna say before I get into the book, I found out after mentioning that I was gonna read this that Bridget Collins is a turf, so I do not recommend buying this book. Please get it from your library if you want to read it. So this is a fantasy world where when people want to have their memory erased, they can have their memories bound into a book. And we are following a young man named Emmett who realizes that he has a binder's calling, so he is going to apprentice as a binder. And it's it's a really an imperfect book, so the first half is so slow when Emmett is at the binder's like setting, and then the second half of the book is so dark and fast-paced, but by the end I ended up giving this four stars because I couldn't stop reading once I was into the story like halfway through. So this book also has a forbidden romance in here and queer elements. I'm not going to say what because that might spoil something for someone, um, but definitely do take care. This book is super dark and um, for instance, one of the things is that because of this memory erasure, there is a side character whose memory is repeatedly erased in order for someone who has power above them to rape them repeatedly. So that is kind of just, that's not a huge plot spoiler. That's just one of the elements that I was absolutely disgusted at. And you're supposed to hate the character and you do, but that's kind of how dark the world gets. Uh, so definitely take care if you're gonna read this. So after The Binding, I picked up Soft Science by Franny Choi. So this one has been on my TBR 
forever. I've had it for years and every time I put it on a TBR, I never read it. And I was like, this time is gonna be different. I'm gonna do it. So yeah, I finished it. Go me. Uh, so this is a collection of queer poems by an Asian American poet who is exploring her queer identity through the lens of being like a cyborg. And it is very cool. So I'm just looking at my notes here and I want to say that there are pop culture references in here to Blade Runner, Chobits, and uh, Ex Machina. So Blade Runner is obviously a, a movie based on the book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Chobits is a manga which was also I think made into an anime and then Ex Machina is a movie and I love all three of them so I was down. I ended up giving this three and a half stars because I either really loved a poem or I didn't gel with it that much at all but the poems that I did love I really loved and throughout these sections there are Turing tests which are done which if you don't know a Turing test is to test for um, like human intelligence or artificial intelligence like to parse it out and I just thought it was very cleverly done. Uh, some of my favorite poems in here are Bad Daughter, Afterlife, The Price of Rain, uh, Shokushu Gokon for the Cyborg Soul, Jabal, Chi, Solitude, Worm Moon, Strawberry Moon, Sturgeon Moon, Hunter's Moon, Beaver Moon, and Introduction to Quantum Theory. So those titles kind of give you an idea of this. So there is a lot of human AI elements, of course, which I love, we know this, but also there's a lot of water imagery, which I really appreciate. Like, so this was really doing it for me and I really recommend it if that sounds at all interesting to you. Next up is a NetGalley arc I read called Finding the Wolf by Mel Eight, uh, who is an American writer. And man, I was so let down. So their first book called Kelpie Blue was quite a nice surprise. Um, and the character development was really strong. And this one, which deals with dragons and werewolves and a missing prince was so, so not what I was looking for. So this is like, Insta bang turned to insta love where the insta bang in my book is like dubious consent The plot was so so basic and contrived I really just should have dnf'd this honestly because in the end I gave it two and a half stars if you like insta love stories and I would more term this as fantasy or erotica than romance because there wasn't really any romance per se um then go for it but otherwise i would steer clear of it so after that i was like i need something good because that was something bad uh so i decided to pick up a short story collection by marjorie Liu, who is half of the monstrous team and holy shit, guys this was so amazing i gave it four and a half stars so there are seven stories and six of them were four to four and a half stars for me. They were freaking awesome. And I'm just gonna look at my notes here um, because I wrote detailed notes on my Goodreads review. Um, link is below always uh, about each story. So basically six of the seven stories really clicked with me and were freaking awesome. All of the six featured badass female main characters. Um, and they all have really dark themes and body horror, malevolent magic, gore, and like a really haunting atmosphere. Um, and it really twists a lot of fairy tale elements on their head. Uh, so I, I like super highly recommend this short story collection if you're someone who likes dark fairy tale esque retellings. This would be for you. So. Uh, I'm gonna go through the stories really fast and like kind of what they were about. No spoilers, but just to give you a taste of it. So the first one was Sympathy for the Bones and it had dark magic, grave digging, and sweet, sweet revenge and I gave it four stars. Uh, story number two was The Briar and the Rose, which is a female, female, queer retelling of Sleeping Beauty involving body snatching and a swordswoman. Uh, and I gave it four stars. Then 
story three, Call Her Savage, is a steampunk historical reshifting featuring mutations, submarines, and deep sea divers. And I gave it four and a half stars. I honestly, that story in particular, I wish it had been a whole damn book because it was the most delicious snack I've had in a while. And I remember like when I finished reading it, I was so sad that it wasn't like a trilogy. I was like, are you kidding me, Marjorie Lou? This story is amazing, four and a half goddamn stars. Um, so then after that, story number five is Where the Heart Lives. Um, and it deals with a ghostly Sid Woods. It's like fae, dark fae, S-I-D-H-E, woods, um, old and new love, and a mute love interest. And that one as well, I gave four and a half stars just because of how haunting and creepy like the setting was and you really couldn't predict what was going to happen. Again, that should have been a whole damn meal because it was so good. Oh my god, it was so good. Um, and then story number six, After the Blood had Amish vampires, a gunslinging female main character, lots of body horror, and gore. And I gave it four and a half goddamn amazing stars. This one again should be a freaking trilogy or like a huge series. Like I, oh my god, I need it, I need it. I wish I could like reach out to Marjorie Lou and be like, this slapped and I need more of it right now because otherwise I'm going to dry up and die without knowing <laughs> what happens like beyond this short story. Um, and then the last story that I really gelled with was number seven, Tangle Root Palace, which is the name of the collection. Um, and it deals with an arranged marriage, ancient dangerous woods, and a subversive rescue. And I gave it four stars. So. Definitely Tangle Root Palace, I think, is the sweetest story in the collection, and it more follows, like, a fairy tale narrative. So she did give us one kind of, like, classic fairy tale spun on its head a little, and it does have dark themes, but not as dark and gory and body horror-y as the other ones. So the only story that I didn't really gel with was number four called The Last Dignity of Man. It has a male main character, but the tone is different. It's set in modern day. It doesn't have any of the haunting atmosphere of the other stories. So personally, if this one story had been removed and it had been the six stories, this probably would have been a five star score for me. Like you need to read these short stories. They are amazing. Um, and the last one I want to talk about today uh, that I read in the first half of June is The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. And this is a water world dystopia where there are two types of people, people who live on land called land walkers and people who live on ships and floats on the ocean and they are called the Damplings. So our two main characters are North, who is a circus performer and she travels with a floating circus with her bear. And the other one is Callendish, who is a grace keeper. Grace keepers work in huts and then there's a trail of like bird cages going out to sea. And when the birds die, it marks the passing of whoever was buried underneath their cage, which is something that like, that's just such a fantastic, weird, bizarre idea. So the only thing that I didn't like about this book is that the last third of the narrative is hijacked by a side character who I did not care about. I wish we had been focusing on Kalanish and North instead. Uh, so yeah, that's why this is four stars instead of higher. But definitely if you'd like like a dreamy water world kind of experience, this would be for you. I love any sort of water world dystopians, they get me, <laughs> they get me so hard. Um, so yeah, this is the last one that I'm going to talk about today. Please let me know what queer books you have picked up for Pride Month. Uh, I really love Pride Month, not only to celebrate pride, but also to get great queer book recommendations. So let me know what's your favorite book or books that you've read lately that has queer rep, I would love to know. And without further ado, I will chat to you in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye.